none of us do. The... You'll just have to improvise. Thank you. I have to hide. What? Uh, all right, um, fine. Come... Stop right there. Thank you. For your service to the Empire, I'll let you live for now. But you'd best make sure our paths don't cross again. a relief. I... I do have a question, though. That shrine, the one I was going to hide in, did you know it was going to collapse? So you kind of murdered him, then? The many shall suffer. Oh, sounds serious. I'm listening. All right, let me see. Stop Fabia going in, but send the new arrival to the empty shrine. Understood. I'll go, but once I'm done, I'll need you to tell me how you know all of this.
What are you doing in here? She needs the res... What? Yulia, Yulia, you need to swallow this. Here, let me help you. Hopefully, in a moment, she should be able to breathe normally. That was extraordinary. How did you know she needed this exact thing? And at this exact moment? Are you some kind of oracle? A what? I'm sorry, I must have misheard you. I think it's your accent, because it sounded like you said, Time Traveler. That was like the gods hearing my prayers and intervening. You just saved a person's life, and you should be proud of yourself. And maybe she can tell us who poisoned her. In the meantime, I'm happy to help you with whatever it is you need. That's a shame. Me, huh? Keep an eye out for Santa. We're finally alone. We have? I must have in. Is that about? Ah, uh, look, it's unfair. I... I've had plenty of time to think about it. Let me see if I can sum up my thoughts. I've always considered my guiding star to be the well-being of the Roman people. Our survival and prosperity have always hinged upon honoring the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. Give the gods what they want and we all prosper. Dishonor them and we all die. It's as simple as that. The real enemy in this place is not the golden rule, but human failings. The temptation to slide into degeneracy, greed, and hubris. I trust that answers your question. Ask them. Good. Sextus Sentius Imperiosus is my name, though magistrate is the proper way to address me. Before I wound up here, I was a decurion in the cavalry of Imperial Rome, helping protect civilization from the barbarians. It's a cavalry officer. As magistrate, I usually wear a toga, but today I may need to survive long enough to create the portal for you, so it seemed prudent. My men and I were at the Emporium in Rome as honor guard for a visiting dignitary arriving upriver by barge. Now the port is usually bustling, but just as our guests arrived, waves of people began running toward the river from streets and alleyways in every direction. They were trying to escape a terrible fire. Unfortunately, the crowd sent my horse into a panic, and I remember it losing its footing by the water's edge. The next thing I knew, I, was, I went looking for my horse. I was elected seven months ago, uncontested because of my command experience. They're supposed to be annual, but I agreed to hold it sooner, hoping it would placate my constituents. Unfortunately, it just seems to have emboldened certain elements instead. Very well. If I did, I'd have... Thank you. Keep an eye out for Centilla, would you? You there! I'm sorry to trouble you, but I couldn't help but notice that fine bow you're carrying. No idea how you managed to get your hands on it. It's, and before you ask, n but I would... Tell me, do you have any idea how people here end up as golden statues? And here I was thinking I was the only one to figure it out. In any case, 
Supposedly, one or two of those arrows is enough to turn a full-grown man into gold. Now, of course, that is a travesty, a terrible, horrible waste of human life, which has to be stopped. And yet, on the other hand, I can't help but think of the tale told by that Greek fella, Aesop, the goose that laid the golden egg. With the ability to transmute organic matter into gold, one could create infinite wealth. Use your imagination. Golden animals, insects, trees and plants. And even if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, half of infinite wealth is still infinite. Interesting. Look, I might have skimmed over that one, but don't be so pedantic. Excellent. So the first question is, how do we get our hands on one of those golden bows? Now, I have a plan, but first, tell me, are you familiar with the story of the goddess Diana? No problem. Diana is our goddess of the hunt, the moon, and the underworld. The one thing priests and poets agree on is that she carried with her a golden bow and a quiver of golden arrows. And it just so happens that there is a shrine of Diana in this very forum with a prominent statue of the goddess herself. And would you like to guess what she's holding in her hand? Precisely. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in that temple staring at it, trying to figure out how to retrieve it without breaking, you know what? Oh, gods, no. If you tried that, we'd all be dead within moments, I'm sure. No, here's what I propose. You give your bow to me, I cover it in a thin layer of gold leaf, and we create a replica of a golden bow. Then you enter the shrine, extinguish the braziers, and under cover of darkness, swap out the fake for the original. It's not theft exactly, it's more of a, a trade. But make no mistake, this is a dangerous path, but in my experience, all the best adventures begin with a risky first step. Now, I'm more of an ideas man. When Prometheus stole fire from the gods and became a hero to all mankind, do you think he was worried about the danger? Only because he was silly enough to get caught. Because the god... So... Wonderful. Now, this is a quality weapon. And here we are. Now, I've gone and unlocked the Shrine of Diana for you, so as quick as you can, head on inside. It's just at the end of the street on the left. Well. Mm, terrible shame, that is. The forum's usually dead quiet at that hour, so I came out to see what was going on. To be honest, I thought maybe poor old Dooley had got out of his cell and was snooping around again. So I popped my head out and saw someone in front of Virgil's shop. I called out to them, but they just turned and ran off without a word. All I remember is they ran past a lit torch and the light glinted off something metallic. Armour, I think. So I suppose it could only be one of three people, Horatius, Domitius, or Rufius. What? You've been good people here. Gilip, my friend Georgius, is always mending our clothes. Well, he, he does his best. I'm just saying. Oh, there's not much. I suppose it all started about eight months ago. My pa had just arranged a husband for me, a fisherman's son. I spent the next week in bed. In the end, they decided I'd do better outside the city. But after about a day, I remember closing my eyes. I suppose the driver took off with his fee and left me for dead. Anyway, I went searching for help. Oh yeah, I suppose you're right. Oh, I try not to worry about it. Thanks. And I like your teeth. They're so white. And your clothes. Oh, I bet my friend... And I'm sure he'd love to... He'll be just a... All right.
Is that you, partner? Do you have the bow? Wonderful. Just go ahead and slide it under the door for me, and I'll unlock it for you. And yet you did. And now... <laughs> no, technically, I never said that. I said, if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, infinite wealth is still infinite. It's hardly my fault if you can't tell the difference between a hypothetical and a promise now, is it? Oh, I do love a good loophole. You're just gonna have to take your chances, I'm afraid. The bow, now. I would reconsider my position quickly if I were you. I'm not sure if you noticed, but you're stuck in there with a hornet's nest, and they can be rather aggressive toward intruders. You know, some say it takes 27 hornet stings to kill a man, but I always wondered how anyone could have known that. Let's find out if they were right, shall we? My beloved Galatea, I write this so that one my beloved Galatea, I write this so that one day, when we're finally together, you will understand what I've done and why I had to do it. The others will call me mad or a monster, but I don't care what they think. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for you. I'll start at the beginning. Soon after my arrival here, as I walked down a corridor lined with golden statues, I thought I heard a whisper behind me, a rasp of air, as if vocal cords of metal strained to say a word or two. I tried to dismiss the idea, tried to concentrate on my work as the city's medic, but that tortured whisper haunted me. Weeks later, in the hallway to the bathhouse, I heard it again and found myself drawn to the statue of a Roman woman wearing a stola. Her face was contorted with anguish and fear, and disturbingly, it was as if she was looking right at me. As I walked past her, I heard that strained whisper again, and turning back, I discovered that even though I had moved, she was still looking right into my soul. That was when it dawned on me. This was no statue. This was a woman trapped within that golden prison. Naturally, I told the others, but when I could not reproduce the results of my experiment, they would not believe me. But from that moment on, I knew the full horror of this place. Immobilized within these statues, living human beings. It was that day, my love, that my heart broke.
You're not supposed to be here. My beloved Galatea, our 
after I learned the terrible truth about the golden statues, I wandered the city as if in a nightmare. What must life be like for these poor souls, entombed in gold, but kept alive somehow? Trapped in their own personal Tartarus, consigned to eternal torment, too horrific for any sane mind to comprehend. I tried to offer them what seemed mercies I could. I began to talk to them, not to keep them company. I'd imagine backstories for them, give them names, and tell them of the world, of the histories and stories I learned about them. As the others became more concerned by my charity, I sought solitude from them, preferring the company of my tormented charges. Discovering a way into the abandoned palace, I began to spend my days walking its halls and sharing with its occupants ancient tales, my mind turning to those of Apollo and Daphne, Perseus and Medusa, and Pygmalion and Galatea. Pygmalion, the sculptor who fell in love with a beautiful statue, and who, praying to Aphrodite for aid, discovered that his beloved Galatea it was then that I heard you whisper to me, Galatea. Forgive me. I know that is not the only just one I followed from the story. But when I turned to look at you, I saw the most exquisite beautiful woman I had ever known. Your face, forever frozen in a look of haunting sadness. Our meeting gave me new purpose to free you from your golden prison, so that I might one day hear you speak, not just whisper your true name to me. So I gathered tools for the long and difficult task ahead, barred the doors to this place, and set to work. Kill me. I just want to die. Make it stop. Beloved Galatea, my attempts at freeing these souls from their golden prisons have not been going to plan. My first charge was a Greek woman who I called Aidami after the Athenian kind of stone by Medusa. Drilling through the gold that impressed her, I was vindicated by the discovery that beneath half an inch of gold, which is so rigid it must be some kind of alloy, was living flesh. Unfortunately, this golden alloy seems to have fused with her skin, 
so removing it exposed the sinew and muscle beneath her and appeared to cause her great pain. Okay. In the first, I braced my hand and would break the golden rule, and yet somehow it did not. It seems whichever god is responsible for imprisoning these poor souls does not care about their suffering at all. They are forsaken. Undeterred, I pressed on, working late into the night, attempting to remove the golden layer that encased her as delicately as I could. Eventually, I was able to free most of her body, but when I released her from her restraints, her first act was to lunge for my throat, clawing at me with all her strength and those sharp metal talons. This was my thanks for trying to save her. Whatever possessed Iodami to attack, she was clearly not a suitable subject for my experiment, and I was forced to lock her inside an isolated wing of the palace and bar the door. As I continued working on snake who broke into my palace and disturbed my experiments and worst of all look at what you made me do to her this never would have happened if you just stayed away you're going to pay for that and you think I care about that I don't care what happens to me as long as you get what you deserve you think you can bring me down with your little wooden arrows before I jam this blade into your throat? What? How? That's impossible. You're trying to intimidate me. Liar! Really? I'm not sure I believe you, but... If you can undo this mess, I'll, I'll give you the key to my old medical chest in the Shrine of Apollo. I imagine it would help Lucretia ease the suffering of those still in the city. But if you're lying to me, I'll break the Golden Rule and kill you and everyone else in this city. Understood? away her pain. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. I swear I will never harm her again. I swear it. I'll stay here to keep her company. But these poor souls, what can be done for them? I've tried everything I can. I fear the only one capable of releasing them properly is whichever god doomed them in the first place. In any case, I must honor our bargain. Here's the key I promised you. It opens a chest in the Shrine of Apollo. Now, please leave. The door here leads out onto the palace balcony. Go. Whatever's in that great temple up there on the bluff. Oh, uh, hello there, partner. You see, my plan was to give you a little fright. You know, like two... Fr but when I opened it, you were gone. Partner, th there's no need for threats. Yeah, well, I don't have to listen to this. Get lost. Ah! 
shall suffer for the sins of the one. Whatever's in that great temple up there on the bluff, I bet it's worth a fortune. <laughs> It's you. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of it. Was there something you wanted? No. I did hear from Ulpius that she disappeared. But I'd been locked in Maliolus's villa for months before she went missing, so... <laughs> I was. <sighs> I can tell you, but... All right. I'd been here about a week. When it dawned on me, I'd be trapped here for the rest of my life. So when my new friend Aurelia offered me a secret way out, I would have done anything. And then I learned her asking price. A thousand denarii. She was supposed to be my friend. So she suggested I take out a loan from Maliolus. And I did. I'm not proud of it, but... Yes, I had to sign an agreement, saying I'd work off the debt over 30 years. I paid Aurelia, and she gave me her so-called way out, Hemlock. Drink this, she said, and you'll be out of here in no time. Of course, I demanded my money back, but she refused. She pointed to a sign on her tavern, saying, let the buyer beware. She immediately told Maliolus I'd tried to escape without paying him back. Only, he didn't seem upset or surprised at all. In fact, he just thanked her. That's what I said to the Magistrate. I went to Sentius and begged for help, but he said the law was clear. I thought about resisting too. But Maliola said if I didn't submit, I'd break the golden rule. He locked me in his villa. Confiscated everything I owned as collateral. And made me wear immodest, humiliating outfits while I worked day in, day out. His wife Claudia was just as bad. I'd be on my hands and knees. Those two took everything from me. But they forgot to confiscate one thing. My hemlock. I just wanted it to be over. But it seems I messed that up too. I brought it on myself. When I've recovered, I expect their thug Domitius will come for me. Only this time. I won't be able to lull myself to sleep at night with the thought of a permanent solution. Honestly, it would have been better if the poison had been allowed to run its course. I doubt it. At least until someone breaks the golden rule. A lot. But it doesn't matter. I... I made a suicide pact with Ulpius last night. He's in exactly the same position as I am. He's probably already thrown himself from the bluff into Maliolus's villa by now. If so, I'd never be able to live with myself. I doubt you could make it up to the bluff in time. I don't know who you are, or why you seem so determined to help me, but... Thank you. All right. All right. <laughs>